Well, hello there and happy Monday to you. Listen, let me ask you this question. Have you ever said this as a nurse? It's like that and that's the way it is, sort of like Run DMC, you know, that in nursing, it's like you take care of everyone else and then you think about yourself. Or, or what about this one? That you feel guilty with just the thought of putting yourself first. Well, listen, you're not alone, so be gentle with yourself. And we're going to get into it here in the break room. And today we're talking about this is how we do it as a multi-passionate nurse. Welcome to the break room. This is your self-care safe space where you can escape from the day-to-day and get recharged and renewed so that you can return back to those tasks or things that you have to do. And I am Deetra Dennis, and I am the self-care coach for nurses, and I empower my sister nurses to prioritize the care of their MVP so that they can show up as the best version of themselves and unpack the well-being of those connected to them. So again, welcome to those that this is your first time, and welcome back to those who have been hanging out with me for a while. So glad to see you here in 2023. And you know what? I was watching um, one of the talk shows and their theme for this year is 2023, 2020 me. So I think we should adopt that as multi-passionate nurses. What about you? I would love to see that in the chat if you agree with that mantra. So I want to share, we are live on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook. So just a few housekeeping things before we get into this is how we do it, okay? So if you're viewing on YouTube, I would love for you to subscribe. Come on, become a part of the family. Subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you're alerted when we are going live or have any other things going on. And for everyone, if you would like the video, um, our live stream, and then share it with someone that you feel could benefit from the things that we discuss over here. And then lastly, comment below because this is a dialogue. This is our conversation in the break room. And so glad to have you here, Heather. So glad to see you. And um, so we're going to get into it today. Again, this is how we do it. Now, how many of you remember the song in the 90s? This is how we do it. You know, it's by Montel Jordan. Yes. So listen, I know, I know. And remember last week, if you had an opportunity to view it, we talked about first things first. And self-care is so important that the American Nurses Association actually Self-care is a part of the code of ethics. It's provision 5.1. So that means it's very important for nurses to take care of themselves. But I want to share with you some uh, a research that was done again by the American Nurses Association, which said that, okay, even though it's the code of ethics, it revealed that 70% of nurses reported putting the health, safety, and well-being of their patients before their own. That is something to pause and think on, right? So I want to kind of take it a little bit further because, you know, over here, we're talking about the multi-passionate nurses and, you know, we have the video on that and I'll leave the links to all of the videos that I'm referencing today in the comments or if you're on YouTube, it'll be in the um, show notes. But as a multi-passionate nurse, it goes beyond the career for us because we're taking our nursing to the community. We're taking our nursing to those that are connected to us, be it our family, friends, and in our faith community. And so when we're doing that, listen, we are doing the most (laughs) and we're helping everybody and putting ourselves last. And when we're doing that, being everything to everybody, you know, it is just really um, taking it another level, if you will, again, like I said before, that we are doing what Mary J. Blige would say, 25-8 is more than 24-7. It is 25-8. We are never off, 
right? So I want to just share, we already know when we neglect self-care that it leads to stress, it leads to exhaustion, it leads to fatigue, it leads to burnout. It also leads to putting ourselves at risk for chronic diseases. But the thing that I want to talk about a little bit is taking it a little bit further. This you won't find on Google because these are some things that I experienced before I made the shift when I um, had the opportunity to work with my coach and change my perspective on things. Because, listen, I was definitely the one doing everything, being everything to everybody and just exhausted on the path to burnout. But it wasn't until I changed my mindset that things are better for me now. Not that I don't stop serving. I still enjoy serving because that's that nurturing personality in me that I still want to serve. I get fulfillment in serving. But we have to do it different because, listen, we are to serve from our overflow. When we take the time for self-care, and I don't just mean going to the spa. I mean every day that we are integrating self-care in everything that we do. That is what I'm talking about here. But when what I'm talking about, when we continue to do what we're doing, the numbers show, again, this is another research that was done by the American Nurses Association, which says that nurses are less healthy than the average American. Another moment of pause, right? Listen, because what we're doing, we're going to keep getting those same results. But today, we're going to think of doing that different. But what I want to share with you, again, three things other than what we talked about with neglecting self-care, these are three things that um, really, really, I know, again, I experienced it. And on the other side, to be in a place of ease and grace, it is a wonderful space to be in. So again, when we keep doing what we've been doing, these are some things that happen. Now, it may not happen overnight, but it may happen over time. So the first one is that it impacts our presence. It impacts our presence or your presence or my presence or our presence. It impacts our presence. And what do I mean by that? Listen, as a multi-passionate nurse, we know that nursing is a calling and it extends beyond our career, as I mentioned before, that is, you know, we're in the community and with those with whom we're connected. And so we are responsible for the light, for the energy that we bring to each of those areas, to our career community and to those with whom we're connected. We're responsible for that. We are to let our light so shine that men may see our good works and God be glorified. Do you agree with me? Type in the chat, yes, if you agree with what I, I'm saying. And so when we enter into a room, we want to be able to bring our love the joy, the peace. We want to be able to do that. But when we neglect self-care, um, it is like we're on autopilot. How many of you remember the commercial, the Dunkin' Donut? I know I'm dating myself. <laughs> but with Dunkin' Donut, the um, gentleman, you know, he would wake up when the commercial first start, the gentleman, he would wake up and he would, you know, be all excited, you know, hit the alarm clock and it's time to make the donuts. But, you know, it started becoming routine and becoming mundane and being like he was on the hamster wheel and he would wake up, time to make the donuts. So that passion that he had in the beginning was lost. Or do you feel that way? You know, you're it, we've normalized putting ourselves last and then we're just going through the motion. We're doing things. Not saying that we're not doing things, but has the passion, are we showing up again as the best version of ourselves, bringing the love, bringing the joy, bringing the peace? Are we doing that? But when we neglect the self-care, sometimes we show up not being, um, bringing those things. So again, when we neglect that, it impacts our presence. Number two. What happens? It impacts us 
being present. It impacts us being present. Well, if you've been around any time, you know I love music. Look, hence the name, the title of our, our uh, talk today. Um, so I'll say it to you how the OJ said it, right? Your body is here with me, but your mind is on the other side of town. Now, have you ever been like that when it comes to at work? You're at work, but then you're thinking about all the other things. You're at a community event where you're supposed to be educating everyone, but you're thinking about other things. You're with your family, friends, or with your faith community, and you're thinking about other things. You're thinking about work or what have you. Has it impacted you being fully present? Has it impacted you? And so it's also called presenteeism. I'm not sure if you've heard that before, but it's, you know, um, in the corporate setting, that is what's called presenteeism, being that you're you're physically, you're there, but mentally, emotionally, you are somewhere else. So when we neglect self-care, this is what happens. It impacts us being present. And the last thing I want to mention is that when we neglect self-care, it impacts our power. And so um, when I think about, again, being a multi-passionate nurse myself, that, um, pardon me a second here, when we um, neglect self-care, we, um, our power is impacted. So, you know, when I talked about in the video, signs of being a multi-passionate nurse, this is truly a divine assignment, a divine influence of us being multi-passionate nurses, you know, again, extended beyond the career. And so when I think about in um, 1 Corinthians, I think it's 12, 28, when I feel, this is me, I don't know if anyone else feels that, but I feel that when it talks about the spiritual gifts of help and helps and healing, I feel that that is what a multi-passionate nurse is. We embody that, that those gifts, ministry of health and healing. And when we neglect self-care, that is impacted. It impacts our power. So we're doing all of the things and we are to be vessels of honor and we are to be used um, for the highest purpose that God created us for. And when we don't take the time to, as I mentioned, self-care is every day, integrating prayer, meditation, studying the scriptures, when we neglect those things, we may be doing a lot of things, but are we doing those things that our steps are ordered to do? Or are we just doing things to be doing it, right? When you pause and have that time to connect with your source, whoever you call your source or your higher power, when you don't have time to connect to the source, you um, that power and unpack your power. Think about this and listen, you know, I love to cook as well. I love music. But when you, as a farmer or a gardener, the long, if you plant food, if you were to harvest the food, the longer the time that the food is away from the source, from the earth, it loses its potency. It loses a lot of its benefits. The same with us. When we don't have the opportunity to connect with the one who created us and who has given us the power, who is giving us the calling, it impacts our power. And I'll give you an example of when we are truly tapped into the power, we can receive those intuitive downloads, what I call intuitive downloads, or when God speaks to your spirit. I remember um, this was a time when I had incorporated self-care and I had, the, I'll, I'll give you two examples. One, um, there was a patient, I had just received report from 
um, you know, the outgoing nurse. And she was sharing with me that a patient had a fever and had a fever for some time. And, you know, the doctor had done all the things, ordered the blood culture, ordered the culture and sensitivity. And so the patient was on the correct antibiotic, but for some reason that her temperature just was not breaking. She was getting the um, ibuprofen, you know, in between and just was not the, the, Fever just wasn't breaking. And so I was, you know, had gotten report and was getting ready to go in to assess. So I was at the um, cart, medicine cart, to go into her room, you know, gathering my things to go into the room. And right before going into the room, I prayed pray every time before I, you know, do anything before going into the patient's room. And so this time it was a different thing. As I was going into the room, I felt inspired to pray a specific prayer for that patient. She didn't know I was praying and none of my patients know I'm praying because I'm doing that internally. So I went into the room, you know, greeted uh, the patient and the family and shared, you know, I would be their nurse for the day, did my usual head to toe assessment. But when I, you know, asked her to take her deep breath in and out, I prayed according to Matthew 8. 14 and 15, that just like when Jesus went to Peter's house and his mother-in-law um, had a fever that just would not leave her, as the scripture would say, but when Jesus touched her hand, the fever left. And I prayed that internally as I was doing the assessment for her. Needless to say, I don't have to tell you how the story ended, but yes, the fever broke. So those are the things that I'm talking about as a multi-passionate nurse. You want to be able to stay connected to the power because you don't know what a person needs. Yes, we know the science of everything that we do as a nurse, the theory part, but when you add the supernatural and the spiritual aspect of it, it's a different type of nursing is all I can say to you. And the other example I want to share is I had a... a an elderly patient that was in the hospital and she was uh, um, had been a frequent flyer and her blood pressure was um, high all of the time. And you know, sometimes how it gets, you see those frequent flyers, it's a revolving door and you know, it's like, okay, they are being non-compliant. But for some reason, that one didn't sit well with in me that she was being non-compliant. So I had the opportunity, thank goodness, that particular night, it wasn't as busy. So what I did is I, you know, just kind of, you know, just kind of sat with it, like, what am I to do? Because that I, I just didn't feel right that she was being non-compliant. So I had the opportunity to sit with her for a little bit. And, you know, being an elder and elder and being that I am a Southern girl and, you know, growing up in the church, I asked her, I said, you know what? Can I do your hair? You know, because it's important that our hair looks good. I don't care how how unwell or we're not feeling. We want our hair to look good. So her hair was kind of, you know, all over the place. I said, do you mind if I braid your hair up? She was like, baby, go ahead. Do what you want to do. So as I was braiding her hair, I asked her, like, what song do you really like? So we ended up singing the song. Um, again, y'all know I love music. So, you know, it was, I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. So we were singing that. And, you know, she was happy clapping her hands and things of that nature. So, you know, after we finished singing, I went to ask her a few questions. I'm like, you know, you've been coming in and your blood pressure is high. Um, what's happening? I said, are you taking your medicine? medicine. And she was like, baby, yes, you know, I take my medicine, but I cut it in half because I can't afford to get it every month. I get it every other month. Ding, ding, ding came to mind like, oh, she is taking it, but just not taking the correct strength. Now, if I would have been tired, it wouldn't have even mattered having that discussion with her. But again, having that opportunity that I had the rest that I needed and all the other things of self-care, when the morning came, and the physician came to make rounds, I shared with him and he, I asked him, um, is it possible, you know, maybe to increase the dose so that she can still get the dose that he wanted her to be on and she can still cut it in half so that she can, you know, take care of her, her things financially. Saying all of that to say, it impacts your power. If you don't have that self-care, a lot of things will... 
you may not get it, you know, because when you are exhausted, sometimes you're in a fog. Type in the chat if you're if you're uh, flowing with me because you're in a fog, you're not thinking clearly. But when you have the opportunity to have the rest, getting the proper sleep, nourishing your body with the proper nutrition, you know, all the other things, reducing the stress, all of the aspects of lifestyle medicine, when you do that, you can truly be the vessels that we were created to be as the nurse. We are there again. We are embody the spiritual gifts of health and healing. And we can do that when we take the time for self-care. And so I want to just recap the three areas that if we continue to do what we're doing, these things may happen. Number one, it impacts your presence how you show up. We want you to show up as the best version of yourself. And those who are around you want you to show up that way too. Because listen, we know how we get when we're tired. The looks that we can give someone can burn a hole through them and we don't have to say a word. But those looks, listen, and everything gets on your nerves. So we want to show up as the best version of ourselves so that we can, um, that it doesn't impact our presence. The second part, if we continue the way we're doing it, it impacts us being present. And lastly, it impacts our power. So I hope that, you know, this has been something of value to you. And if you wouldn't mind sharing in the chat or the comment, how has, you know, what are your takeaways from what I mentioned? Does any of this resonate with you? Has any of those things that I mentioned, you know, you, you kind of seeing those things in yourself? Um, I would love to see in the chat if, if that is, or the comments, I keep saying the chat, uh, in the comments, if any of that resonates with you. Well, it's okay. And if you're watching this as a replay, I still would love to get feedback from you of, you know, how has this um, impact, impact, look, we've been using the word impact tonight. How has this impacted you by neglecting self-care? And if you would like to do it differently, I invite you to schedule a call with me for a, a self-care reset discovery call. And I'll put that in the um, comments, um, the link to that, if you would like to um, schedule a call with me so that we can change this. We can do it different. We can do it differently. And you know, I always love to end with a quote. So our quote tonight is, self-care is never a selfish act. It is simply good steward stewardship of the only gift you have, the gift you were put on earth to offer to others whose lives you touch. So thank you so much for your time. Um, I don't take it lightly. I appreciate you spending time with me today. And again, I hope that you will like the video and share it with someone who you feel could benefit from the things that we discussed tonight. And I will see you on next week. Have a good week and have a good evening. <laughs>